Okay, welcome to the Edge Hero podcast. I'm Kirk Konecki, the CEO and Superintendent of Indian Hill Exempted Village School District, and I am here today with sophomore Zoe Glenn and senior Gino Cardosi. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for thanks having, for having me. me. Awesome to have you today, Gino. Thanks for stepping in here, yeah. kind of being a hero for me at the last minute. <laughs> we sure always have some changes, you know, and we have to live with the curveballs. Um, speaking of curveballs, when it comes to thinking of spring sports and uh, covering sporting events, Gino, like you are someone who's passionate about uh, media and uh, news reporting and production, and you're gonna, um, I think, move forward with that kind of thing, but you look at it through a little bit of a different lens. Like you're always trying to capture what you see and share it out for others. Where did you develop that interest? Uh, yeah, so randomly my, my freshman year after I just moved here, I was scheduling classes and I was like, well, I have an extra like half a like half semester to throw something in there and I was looking through the thing and I was like, Video Tech One, what is that? And uh, yeah, I scheduled it and it was like basics of video broadcasting and it was me and I was like, oh, that sounds fun and I, I took it and I fell down this rabbit hole and I'm still here four years later. What are some of the most exciting um, moments with your own peers that you've been able to capture and talk about over the last couple of years that you're, like if you had to point to one or two things that you're like, hey, I helped capture that, produce that, report on that, like is there something that sticks out in your mind? Oh God, uh, four years of games and sports seasons. Uh, <laughs> ooh. You didn't know these questions would be so tough yeah, today, no, Mr. Kinecki, did you? Yeah, I think you? back now. Ooh, um, <laughs> what was it? Freshman year 2020, we went to uh, basketball, went to like first round playoffs, I think, or whatever. We went over, we traveled a little ways to go do that, and I got to announce that game. That was fun. We unfortunately lost, I believe. But yeah. Uh, any of the football games, watching uh, the team just evolve and go forward, uh, yeah, it was great. Unfortunately, this year we did really well. I didn't get to go to the, the playoff game, which I'm still still mad about. <laughs> it hasn't gone on at night. So you're a fan, but you're also doing this because you have an interest in, in producing and capturing what's going on for others. And of course, we can hear your voice right now and the way you even comport yourself, right? This is something you're really serious about. And the courses here have helped also to kind of move you through this interest, right? And now what are you going to do with it? Uh, well, right now I'm going to Xavier University and with my major is their digital innovations and in film technology, which is a really fancy way of saying media. Uh, yeah, so from there I like to study like news law, I think, and then go to law school after that and then do law for media side. Wow, I mean, I just think it shows the power of matching your own interest with some courses and some teachers and some experiences that you liked, and then watching it evolve is really amazing. Um, and I'm, I wish you the best, of course, at Xavier. Uh, you're getting ready to graduate with a class of 24 here, and it's coming quick. Yeah, only, I got, what is today, the 15th, so I got, what, two more days? And there you go, two, yeah. more, two more serious days, right? Ooh. And then we'll see you on stage. Um, Zoe, like you hear that, right? And you're sitting next to the senior and you think maybe just briefly about all the accomplishments and the time that he's put in and what he's done. Here you are, sophomore, and you've just completed a pretty amazing run with the softball team that's been historic this year. How have you learned about the culture of the Braves and, and what it took this season for the softball team to perform at the level it did? I mean, this is my first year at Indian Hill coming in the, they're also welcoming the seniors. They have a great group of girls. Um, the coaches are amazing, and they just built a really great community that was really easy to come into. And they're very motivating, and they really just helped with whatever we needed. And you helped too, right? You had a pretty good season. So run through the Zoe stats for us so we kind of understand what your season was like. Um, I think I had nine home runs. Um, I think I finished first in batting average for the CHL. And then like third or fourth in RBIs, so. And what's a good batting average for the people who are listening out there that don't really know? I mean, good is like 400, around there. Yeah. Yeah. And RBIs, explain to everybody like, what are you doing when you get an RBI? Because some people don't know. It runs about it in, so it's like you get a hit that moves another runner like to score. So not only are you getting some hits and some home runs yourself, but the more RBIs you have, the better because you're helping your teammates. Yes. Yes. And you put a lot of your teammates in scoring position this mm -hmm. year, which is pretty amazing. And we were talking before the podcast, Zoe, um, 
the seniors have been through four years of really trying to elevate mm -hmm. this program and what have you learned from them? I mean really just perseverance, determination, like they had a rocky start at first but being able to like come back, never give up, they always have such a positive attitude which really helped them get to the level they are now as seniors. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty amazing to see this perseverance, right, over time. And we all know, right, Gino, when you're watching an event, you can kind of see how the ebb and flow goes and how the, the climate can change for a team one inning to the next, especially in baseball or softball. But um, being able to play through adversity is really important. Gino, is there a experience that you think back about now with, with some of the coverage that you've done where you were like, oh, that Brave really showed some resilience or perseverance or that team really did and I'll never forget it? Uh, it's, it's always fun when we put the, the camera on the huddles to like watch the coach and you can tell like how the game's going based on how vocal the coach seems to be. But uh, I think it was after John broke his collarbone Last couple of things seen, especially John Potagel. John Potagel, yeah, the quarterback, our star quarterback. Yeah. Who is unfortunately not going to football. <laughs> uh, is it, oh, was it Jim Jim Liebel or Sitchell? Yeah. Ben Sitchell, Sitchell yeah. who stepped up? That was, I was impressed. I saw he had some massive size 20 shoes he had to fill to get into that. And it was just amazing because I came pretty much every game every Friday night to watch it on a 720p time. Yeah, everybody screen. was kind of wondering would yeah. the team be able to keep moving forward and rally and then somebody else kind of stepped up. Yeah. And then they you form that new team kind of right over time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's always exciting to see. Zoe, uh, we were talking a little bit about that before too. And you, you mentioned you have a younger sister that also plays. And so growing up in the sport and playing uh, at a highly competitive level what does it take I mean you have to definitely be 110 percent committed to it you have to practice outside of like what your team's doing you have to be able to just push yourself past like what you think your level is and what your limit is and just be able to commit to it and do you and your sibling push each other yes definitely yes. like how does that happen competitively because I know you love your sister mm -hmm. but like what what's going on outside of the regular practice and games where you know like oh, we're helping each other I mean we go to lessons together we're on the same travel ball team we've played with each other since we both started all the way from like rec to now and so being able to be next to each other we definitely can get on each other's nerves a little bit sometimes <laughs> but being able to motivate and like criticize a little bit has definitely been able to like help balance each other out so uh, travel softball much like other sports is a big commitment mm -hmm. can you just give uh, the viewer and the listener a little bit of a picture of what's happening outside of the regular Indian Hill softball season as you get involved in this this kind of travel program yeah I mean during the winter we're not allowed to practice with our travel ball team there's like rules against it but me and my sister go to like one hitting lesson a week and then right after school ball finishes we have two practices a week with our travel ball team and then I think at the beginning of June is when we start tournaments and we have it like every weekend throughout the summer except maybe like one weekend. Wow, so a lot of travel and you're yes. going to get to go all over the country this year? Yeah, I mean I'll go to like Florida, Tennessee, we go to a lot of northern Ohio though. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's great. And you know, I know Gino, you have put a lot of time in just like Zoe does uh, with activities and the average person, right, they tend to remember high school the way they had it. and you all seem to have these amazingly busy schedules and they're fun experiences also hopefully but you have to build um, some I guess muscle of routine what have you done Gino because you've been pretty successful over the last four years but what have you done to create some discipline and some routine and organization for your life because you're all over the place yeah all right uh, between IHTN and then between theater and tech crew uh, it's been it's been interesting but uh, I try to get sleep doesn't always work out, but I try to get to bed at a reasonable time between 10.30 midnight. Uh, yeah, adult monster energy is my best friend. <laughs> yeah. And during, during like the theater season while you're doing these other things, right, just like a softball practice, like where you're, you're somewhere for three, four, five hours, right? How do you balance that with all that academic work that you're also getting done? I mean, how do you fit it in? Uh, I pride myself on being very efficient in class. I generally get everything done. So 
if I don't, Tech Crew is best described as being about 20 minutes of complete and utter boredom followed by 30 <laughs> seconds of mind-numbing insanity. So in that in that time, I can usually rip my laptop out and like tap Outside of the mind-numbing insanity, yeah. you have In the 20 bit minutes of boredom before we have a shift change or something, I can usually okay. get I'm never going to forget that. That's going to be good advice I'll give other yeah. people that want to do the Tech Crew in the yeah. future. Um, what about you, Zoe? Like you're, again, you're in a different position, right? We were talking, you're taking some AP classes, you had a test, maybe not the same load as a senior now, but how are you developing that so that you can continue to do what you want to do at a high level, but stay focused on your academics too? What do you do? I mean, I try to limit my distractions, with, especially the phone's kind of hard, but I also try to be as productive as possible and whenever I have free time, like make sure I'm getting the stuff done I need to get done. Sure, and then avoiding distractions or creating your own boundaries mm -hmm. is really important. It's great to hear, you know, I think sometimes uh, people overgeneralize, right? Teenagers, wow, but you all have created these kind of routines and boundaries for yourself, which is a sign of maturity, I think, and rites of passage that matter. So the, the governor is getting ready to sign a symbolic law. Maybe today, you know, you may be seeing some of these cell phone ban things in the headlines. And I think all sorts of people have different opinions about device use and social media. You've grown up with it, right? And yeah. so senior, sophomore, um, what's your take on trusting a teenager to make these decisions about what to do with not only devices in school or out of school, but social media in your life. What, what would you say about this, Gina? Uh, I'm gonna let her start with this actually because I have a hot minute to talk about this one for A hot minute, uh, okay. Zoe, what do you think about this? I would just say maturity has a lot to do with it. Just being able to have that kind of self-control, like know how to use it, know where your limit is. And if you know how to do that, I think it's like, all right. Perfect. Do you think your teachers have helped teach that to you as you've grown up? Yeah, yeah. And you, you, you haven't always been in Indy Hill, so you've been in other states. Mm -hmm. yes. Would you say across the board this is something that your generation has grown up learning about, the good and the evil of these things? Yes, I mean, especially here we have to talk about like just social media in general. But I mean, yeah, everywhere they have their debates on if it, how much it should be used, when it should be used, like learning how to use it as a resource but not as a distraction, like it's a big thing. Problem in your classrooms? Um, I mean, I guess it could be, but I don't really see I, I don't see issues that frequently with it. Okay, Gina. All right, so uh, I work in a profession here at Indian Hill High School where I uh, always kind of glued to my phone. I'm always getting texts from people, be it the Braze Beat producers group chat for everything, or Mr. King or Mr. Dobbs about what's going on and what the schedule is. Uh, so I am sort of in a position, there are a lot of people in the school that are sort of in a position where they need their phones on a daily basis. And then second of all, it's, yeah, it's a maturity thing. You know, there's a time and place. If you're in class with a teacher, don't pull your phone out. No, I'm weird. I don't have any social media. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not always checking my Instagram or looking at my Snapchat. What, yeah. what is it, a streak? Or, yeah, 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 a streak. <laughs> so, that, so yeah. I think it's interesting, and of course, right, at different levels developmentally for children at different ages, we all know that there's there's different approaches you can take, um, and I find it um, always interesting about uh, the balance between trust and decision making for teenagers in a high school versus those outside and how they view you. So let's go to the next question. Like Zoe, for the person that hasn't stepped foot in high school in the last 20 or 30 years, that maybe now is even a parent or a community member, maybe they don't even have children in the, in the community, how would you describe a modern high school to them and what goes on in a place like this and how, what level of trust should you get as a young adult? I mean, I feel like, again, just same thing, maturity. Like, if you have that maturity, you should be able to uh, give that trust to them. But um, at school, I mean, we use our devices as a resource. We're always on a computer. I think it's shifted a lot. Like, even since I was, like, in elementary school to now, like, schools are giving out computers now. I mean, you bring your own device. That's a lot of what we do now is just on a computer. Learning how to manage the time and the use and then the disconnect time and mm -hmm. use is something that matters. Yes, yes. Okay, great. And Gino, like, What's changed in high school since Mr. Konecki was <laughs> roaming the halls of a high school? You know, like, what do people need to know about the modern high school experience from your point of view? I mean, the world as a whole is much, much more connected now. People have friends, they're texting friends. You know, we want, to, the modern world is all about connection and how can you collaborate and communicate within a group. So you know, having the ability to constantly communicate and work on people skills, I think is an amazing and invaluable tool, especially for future generations going into the workforce. And the career pathway piece, you already explained a little bit to us about your interests, but in terms of having to navigate as a student the use of producing academic work with um, technology, maybe not a cell phone, but technology, 
how how much have you learned in your your school career? You, uh, you've had these things with you since you were a child, right? Uh, I actually didn't get my phone until I was almost in high school. Well, that might be good, yeah. right? But in terms of using like the devices to type or to do a web search or whatever, like you've kind of grown up this generation with these things in class. Yeah. I'm, I mean, yeah. Uh, is having, it natural? Is it just like, why is this even a topic? Or is it like, we learn to use it, we learn not to use it? Every, every once in a while, it keeps popping up and then disappearing mm -hmm. and popping up and disappearing. But yeah, uh, certainly the distraction part is there. Like sometimes I'm like, I'm bored, I'm working on this essay, and I'm like, I am like, I'm, <laughs> my eyes are crossed. I'm like, I gotta do something else, and I'll just like check my email real quick or something. But you're not writing out essays anymore. Uh, the last essay I wrote for the next three-ish months I just finished up a little while ago, so yeah. I mean, but you're literally not writing, oh, you're typing. Oh, yeah, no, no, we are typing out essays, which is so much nicer. And when you're sending work into your teachers, you're using a portal, right? Yeah, we Called Canvas? Canvas, and then we use Turnitin through that, too, which is... So you're yeah. using a lot of attachments, and yeah. you're you're sending your work electronically and yeah. doing those kinds of things? Yeah. It makes for efficiency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, Zoe, you, you've been in some other school districts, obviously, right? Now you've come to Indian Hill. Um, has it met your expectations and your family's expectations? Like, what is it about this culture that you appreciate, maybe versus what you've had before? Or is there something that you're like, oh, I wish we had that because I had it there? What do you think? No, my family loves it here. We love it here. We love the community. We love the school. It's very, like, intelligent school. Everyone's at a high level compared to, I think, most places I've been. So it's been great to see that. And it kind of motivates me to get want to be higher and want to do better in my classes. And so you, there's some competition, but also some um, rigor that you're seeing that you like? Yes. Is there a teacher or a class that you've had this year that kind of sticks out in your mind where you're like, oh man, I'm so glad I had the opportunity to do that with that person? I think all of them. I mean, I haven't had one that I've really been like not learning something from and like really taking valuable lessons from. They're all great. And making a transition when you move as a student can be difficult, right? Yes. So the social piece of school can always be difficult to navigate, but is there a uh, is there an adult or a peer that you would point to that you're like, oh, they made that easier for me? I mean, all my teachers like check in on me, like seeing how I'm like transitioning and like friends. So I'm very like social person, so it's kind of easy to like, and I've done it before, so it's kind of easy to come into a new school. I mean, my coach, Coach Saeed, he was great. Coach Flint, they're great. They're just great at welcoming and creating community. Well, that's good to hear. We're glad that you're here, obviously, yes. and uh, you're you're an easy communicator. We see that today. And of course, Gino, you're an easy communicator, and I think you're right, going to be a professional communicator. Um, how important is it when you hear things from your principal and your teachers about communicating and communicating yourself and modeling and leadership? How important is that to you? I mean, massively, especially because I do, you know, at the desk, which is just behind us almost every week. So yeah, learning how to communicate, how to present yourself, how to talk to people is the entirety of the jobs I'm considering, be it a lawyer or be it an anchor on a news station. And when you hear this phrase, right, leadership, Gino, sometimes it can be like overgeneralized and everybody has kind of their own definition, but what do you want to be known as in terms of a leader or how would you want people to define it when they think of you you know because everybody kind of wants to lead the things they're good at but what's leadership mean to you uh okay uh, ooh. <laughs> uh that's why it's the hot seat yeah yeah uh i was not expecting these uh, difficult questions <laughs> pulled me from the studio <laughs> I mean, it'll be the last hard one. Yeah, I promise. All right. mm -hmm. we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, leadership as a whole, I think, is just you know shouldering the burden of the team on top of you, not just you know giving orders, but also doing it. So but. sometimes leading alongside. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a great way. I just love hearing the way you just phrase that because again, I think everybody can talk about it. Being a part of a team, you can still lead, but you don't always have to be out front. Yeah. I mean, it takes a team to put on this type of production. Oh, like yeah. when I look around this studio, yeah. how many people are involved in putting together one of your your shows? For a Braves beat, uh, well, we have two anchors, then we have a director, uh, a producer, which is me and Isaac, and then we'll have uh, a switcher operator who does the all the controls for which camera is shooting what at what time. We'll have a teleprompter operator, which is usually Lizzie Crandall. Shout out, she's great at it. <laughs> Uh, and then we'll have a video wall operator who's working the giant TV we have there, putting different graphics up. And then we'll have somebody who does it in post, uh, Mr. Isaac Atchison or Mr. Dops. You're like up to 10 already. Yeah. I think. And then. It's pretty amazing. 
and then we do it every week. And you guys are up for a bunch of uh, blue chip uh, media awards yeah. again this year. I think that's coming up this week. That's so tomorrow. can you explain to people what those are, just so they know? Yeah, so blue chips is basically the Oscars of Cincinnati. So it, this is just a really simple way to put it. It's uh, it's a little event you go to every, have it every year, and you submit little community uh, video or theater projects. And are you up for a few? Yes. It, we have submitted <laughs> several IGTN uh, game shoots, several Braze Beat game shoots, uh, several Braze Beat shoots, and a couple of other things that I can't look well, at. Well, best right wishes on. to you. I, ha I have a feeling you'll come home with some hardware, and I believe that the programs every year come home with a lot of hardware. I think last year may have been a record-setting year, but yes. wish you the best on that, and you have produced a lot of amazing things. So let's wrap up with a little bit of fun here today. Um, you both have some goals for the future. Right, Gino, we heard about what you're gonna do in school, but like, what's a goal that you have for yourself over the next couple years that maybe we don't know about? Ooh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to get uh, straight A's all through college, I and mean, it's a simple goal, but you know. Yeah. Maybe not a simple goal, I mean, but a yeah, big goal, but, but yeah. that's a great goal, right? You're gonna yeah. push yourself academically. Yeah, try definitely. Okay. Push myself through that. See, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> Zoe, if there's a goal that you have moving forward, obviously, um, you know, you're going to be here with us for a couple years, but what's on your mind? Um, I'm going through the process of like recruitment, college camps, and whatever, so probably maybe playing softball in college. I don't know really what I want to do yet, but possibly going down that path. Is there an academic interest that you kind of uh, are more passionate about than others that maybe we don't know about? I don't know. I'm not very sure about what I want to do, like as in like jobs. So yeah, and that's okay, right? Yeah. You've got some time I to have explore. Some time, yes. Maybe check out experience ships or a career yes. pathway and see what what there is out there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you get done with a softball game. Everybody is like, you know, tired and hungry. Mm -hmm. What's the go-to meal for you in Cincy? Naughty. I've tried Skyline Chili. I don't really like that. I'm not gonna lie. Do you Slender. like it? I know. I don't really like it. Um, probably something basic like Chick Fil A or like Chipotle or something like Chick -fil -A. that. Chick Fil A. That yeah. tends to be a popular one yes. on the list here. Maybe Chipotle. What's the order at Chipotle? Oh, I'm basic. I just get like rice and steak and queso, some vegetables. That's about it. In a bowl. Yeah, basic I get a bowl. bowl. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll come back to you in a couple of years uh, on that one. <laughs> Gino, what's the go-to for fun when you're you need that snack or that fix? Uh, Skyline is always a big thing. That's uh, theater and. Uh, what's the order at Skyline? Uh, I usually get a uh, five way Ooh, and five medium way. five way. Yeah. Medium five. I don't that's even know what that is. Well, see, that's experience yeah, right there. Yeah, go back. That is senior experience yeah. right there if you're going to the five way. Okay, well, listen, I really appreciate both of you being here. You you both perform at such a stellar high level um, and in your respective areas. It was interesting to, for me to think about that with you today. Gino, we wish you and all the members of the class of 24 the best and can't wait to see what you do as Xavier. I know I'm going to be seeing you like on my television screen in the future. Keep doing great work. And Zoe, this softball program is on the cusp of greatness here, yes, right? Yes. Winning season, you've been a part of that. You're building that team culture. you got such a positive energy around you. Keep doing great things, and Thank we'll you. see you again on the podcast. Thank you both for your time today. Thank Thanks you. so much. Yeah. All right.